Hey guys, welcome back to Haven Hill Homestead. If you notice I'm in the same clothes from the last video, it's because I'm recording this on the exact same day. Um, it's because Jace and I are getting ready to leave um, for our 20th anniversary. In fact, by the time you see this, we are probably already way up north, which is exciting. Or we're on our way. I don't know how this exactly will release, so we might be on our way. But anyway, there is a topic that is I am really, really passionate about because it has become, an, or it has always been a necessity for us, and it's how to find ways that your homestead can make you money. Because um, when we purchased this place, when we purchased Haven Hill, it was not Haven Hill, we named it Haven Hill. We named it Haven Hill because it is a restoration project. Go back to early, even just the first video, you can hear more about our story if you have not listened to it yet. But not only just the land, the land needed to be um, restored. It is still being restored. We are going into season number three, being out here, but our house as well. So while we've done some things on the inside, we know that where we will be, we will most likely be putting an addition of some sort on. Um, the outside of our home needs to be completely recited and that will come in the future and it needs to be recited because we have wood siding and while i love the idea of it it's been so far neglected that there's lots of places that are completely rotted the room that i'm in right now is my most favorite room it's a three seasons room there's one upstairs where i'm at right now there's one downstairs the downstairs one is my sunroom greenhouse is what i fondly fondly call it Anyway, there's just been so much that we desire to do out here to restore it back to beauty because it was, it was very much neglected. The one thing that really we love and really sold us on this property is we have a massive um, barn. It was a horse barn. It's actually a horse arena still. And we have really big dreams for that. But all of that requires time and all of it requires money so um well my husband is not my husband works you know full time in what he does what he's done for a very very long time um i knew in order to just afford like the feed cost of animals which only continues to go up i needed to find things that would help offset that cost and hopefully make money for us well be or as well because I don't want to get stuck in the rut of um, making $5 here and $5 there and then still forking out so much money for feed costs. So in order to do the things that we do here, that was something that was really I was pretty passionate about early on. So I want to share with you the things that we have done that have actually made money for our family. What you must know is I am a photographer. So I continue to use our land to photograph and that has been helpful. I used to be a wedding photographer for many, many years, for actually about a decade of my life. I do not do that anymore. But we invite families out here when I am photographing um, to have their family pictures done. So that has helped. But I want to share with you other things that actually have brought in money and we're still learning our land. We're still learning the things that we can do. But there's a couple things that I'm here to tell you you can do in small spaces and you can actually do it well and it can bring in money for your family. So I have about four things I'm going to share with you today and I'm hoping to delve more into that in the upcoming um, months as I see it work out and even give you some numbers probably by the end of this season to tell you, okay, here's actually what it has made for us. So stay tuned. I can give you some projections, but here's what I can tell you. Okay. So the first thing um, that we started, not in our first season, so when we first moved here, it was in December, and it was cold. And that very first summer, or I'm sorry, that following, or that next January, I had Deacon. So that first summer here, the gardens were for us. I was learning the land, I saw the problems, and that's all, that's all I did. Starting last year, so that was, um, that was two years ago, starting last year, we expanded our garden exponentially and the one thing that i offered last year was the very first year of our curated farmers market basket csa if you've not heard of a csa it stands for community supported agriculture and i did that because i knew i was going to be growing so much for us and i did it to hold myself accountable and to try to make a little bit of money while 
also involving other people. So I'm going to explain what we did in just a minute, but I want you to have a full understanding of what a CSA is. There's many different types of CSAs. There's vegetable CSAs, there's herb CSAs, there's flower CSAs, there's meat CSAs. You can have all different types. And my goal that fits so well with my personality is that I was going to grow the vegetables, herbs, and flowers. But something, in order for me to do it and do it well, I have to be just so inspired by beauty. So the flowers did that for me, but I also need to be inspired by community. And I'm not all about us get, becoming um, self-sustained. I actually don't desire that. I want us to be community sustained. And what I mean by that is I knew I wanted to have other people involved in this CSA to have part of it, to have their beauty part of it, to have their practical area part of it so that I was drawing attention to other people and to other businesses. I don't want to just draw attention to ourselves. I wanted to draw attention to other businesses as well. So I'm going to walk you through what we put in our CSA this year and last year. You'll have to excuse my arm. My arm is just trying to hold my camera steady because if you're new in this space, I've said this multiple times, I try to not say it near as much anymore, but my vlogging camera broke. So you actually have my professional camera, which is much nicer. It's just a lot heavier. Um, and I don't have my, my tripod, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, all that to say. Okay, so here's what we did last year. Last year I involved three other businesses. We had a local um, cattle rancher who does our meat, my very favorite boutique in our local town called Lavender and Lily. She always had something for the kitchen in it. Okay, so I provided all of the vegetables, the herbs, and the flowers, and I had a dear friend of mine do all of our recipe cards, so that's a whole other thing. If you don't know this, my family has a restaurant. We've had a restaurant for a long time in Michigan, or they have. They've had a restaurant for a long time in Michigan, and so food is just a part of me. Making delicious food that our families enjoy together, our people, is just a part of me. So I've had our family recipes or recipes that I've developed with my kids in each one. And then I had one other business that was part of a few of them where she uh, she had some sort of product that she created for that was natural to be used like oils or cleaning or different things. So this year there are actually five businesses that are part that are a part of it. So Jag Cattle is who is provides all of our beef again. Their their beef is absolutely amazing. Lavender and Lily is still doing something from her store from the kitchen area and I love it. I love her products and I love supporting her. She has her store, if you're ever local, is amazing. Um, I am still doing the flowers, the herbs, and the vegetables. More about that in the future. Um, my friend that did the recipe cards is still doing that for us this year. So they'll be all cohesive that will go with the ones from last year and um, working to build on those. And then um, this year I also involved another farm that is providing pork for us for the very first basket. I have another woman who does, um, I'm gonna list all of their businesses down low, but I have another woman who makes natural candles. So I love, love, love things that smell good. And I've had a very hard time even finding things that are natural, um, supposedly natural candles that actually work for me. And this, her, oh, her, um, her business, her candles, I'm able to use without having any side effects. So that's huge for me. So she is making two custom candles for just for Haven Hill. I'm super thrilled about that. Um, and then, so last year I was making bread um, every single pickup. So our pickup is once a month at the very end. So May, June, July, August, and September, we have five pickups once a month. And I was making the bread um, last year and I realized after probably the third, second or third pickup, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna have to find somebody else to replace it because it takes so much of my time to bake this bread and we expanded to 20 families this year that I'm like, there's no way I can do that. So I found a local mama who's also a friend of mine who started a bakery this past year. Her products are fantastic. And she is doing all of the bread um, for the uh, CSA pickups this year. So I'm super thrilled about that. Um, <clears throat> so they will come once a year. Oh, I'm sorry. I also forgot our, our families, our chicken and ducks, our eggs are in there as well. Herbs every month, the meat, the vegetables when we start having them, the flowers, all of that. Um, 
Last year, I probably, because it was our first year, I priced myself low. I wanted people to be able to experience what I was dreaming about without me losing money. And I was able to do that last year. I did not lose money last year. I probably broke even. But this year I knew I needed to try to work to make money at it because it takes so much time. And I don't apologize for that. If you knew what our animal feed bills were, you would probably understand that alone. So anyway, all that to say, our Haven Hill, our curated, our, I guess, our Haven Hill curated farmer market, farmer's market CSA basket is something I'm super, super excited about. And it actually does bring in money that helps our family and everything that we are trying to do around here. A CSA is something that you can take part of um, or you can host it. We are hosting it. And so the pickups are here out are out here at Haven Hill. I encourage people when they come out here to come look around, to explore, to see the animals. If they have questions to ask them, to see how we actually grow things. Because again, my goal is to build that community. I don't want to live life alone. That sounds not lovely to me. I desire to build community, especially with people that are like-minded, that want their their fruits and their vegetables and their herbs um, to be grown organically, that they want the animals that are delivering products to them, whether it's meat or eggs to be treated ethically, that they want to support small businesses, as particularly women, women-run businesses, that is a big deal to me, especially the mamas, that we want to support them. That is my goal in all of this, and that is what we're doing out here. So I'm very excited to say that this year, um, it has almost doubled. I did not fully double it. It was really close. I think we did 11 or 12 families last year. We're doing about 20 to 21 families this year, and I'm really, really thrilled about that. Um, my goal is to always keep it small. I want it to feel attainable to us so that we can do other things as well. So let me delve into that. Last year, my girls um, were doing bouquets. This year, we are we are still doing that. They come in every single um, CSA basket, and our CSA shareholders also um, are able to come and explore in our gardens and also um, cut one bouquet a week. It's included in the price of their CSA. Um, one one bouquet a week if they desire to do that. But we're also starting to succession plant sunflowers. Our sunflowers were phenomenal last year. And we have a whole area this year, separate from where we did them last year, that we're delving into sunflowers pretty hardcore because sunflowers are a big deal around here. I don't know if they are where you are at. Um, but we are, our goal is to really um, grow our sunflower business out here with local people, but also um, local businesses. So more about that to come. And I will share more about that in the future, but we're still working through a couple of the details. So the, my goal is that every other week I'll be planting about 300 sunflowers, give or take just a little bit. We'll see how it goes according to the numbers that come out in the near future. So the sunflowers are something. And sunflowers, I've, I've talked about them in other videos the last or no, I'm sorry, two videos ago, I talked about them more in depth. So go look at that one. But sunflowers are so wonderful, easy to grow, and they're so good for your soil. And almost anybody can grow them. Um, the bunnies are kind of a big deal around here as well. My daughters sell their bunnies. Um, and this year I'm also looking into, I don't know if it's going to be ready yet this year, but I'm also looking into how we can better um, help local, um, just, you know, household type of gardeners get bunny manure or fertilizer for their gardens um, and what that might look like. I have some things that I'm still trying to research and work out, so it may not be ready till more of the end of the year, but that is something because not everybody wants that. But again, I've talked about bunnies and their fertilizer here in this space, and I'm not gonna go into it again, but it's so perfect for the garden, and I believe in it so much and what it did for our garden last year that I wanna start trying to find ways to offer that to local, just small gardeners. One more thing, so that was my third thing. One more thing that we are doing this year to bring in money is we are starting to really um, delve into hosting workshops to help te teach people. So whether they're gardening workshops, um, 
learning how to just the very basics of homesteading, those types of workshops, art workshops, which primarily involve um, photography for me. Um, we do lots with kitchen workshops, sourdough, regular French bread, just different things. And we're hoping to build that more and more and more um, because that is something I am so passionate about. My whole mission in all of this is just to live staying awake and what does that actually look like? So the workshops and our barn are connected. In the next couple of years, hopefully, we will have a whole space completely devoted to that outside in our barn. Um, in the meantime, we are hosting them at another local business and also in our kitchen. So stay tuned for more of those. But workshops are a really great way to bring in money and to share what you have already learned to help encourage people who are newer in this journey. So that is the other thing that we're doing. So I hope those four ideas, the CSA, sunflowers, bunnies and all that they entail. Look at other videos for that, that deal with the bunnies and the workshops. Those are four really simple ways that you can do things on your homestead that will help you um, bring in money to offset animal feed or to potentially even as you build it, support your family someday. So I hope that's encouraging. I hope that's um, I hope that feels doable to you. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments. We are happy to answer your questions and how we're doing things out here. Um, I will try to do one as the year goes along with more specific numbers for you. But I, in the meantime, I hope that that feels encouraging for you. So anyway, have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. And I cannot wait to touch base with you when Jason and I get back from our trip way up north Michigan. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. As I throw my hair at you. <laughs>